The Fraser Institute is a Canadian public policy think tank and registered charity. It has been described as politically conservative and libertarian. The institute is headquartered in Vancouver, with offices also located in Calgary, Toronto, and Montreal, and ties to a global network of 80 think tanks through the Economic Freedom Network. According to the 2014 Global Go to Think Tank Index report, Think Tanks and Civil Societies Program, University of Pennsylvania, Fraser is number 23 of 100 in the top think tanks worldwide, non-US. Number 19 of 150 in the top think tanks worldwide, US and non-US and number one of 30 in the top think tanks in Mexico and Canada. History The Fraser Institute was founded in 1974 by Michael Walker, an economist from the University of Western Ontario, and businessman T. Patrick Boyle, then a vice president of Macmillan Bloedel. It obtained charitable status in Canada on October 22, 1974, and in the United States in 1978. Its stated mission is, "...to measure, study, and communicate the impact of competitive markets and government intervention on the welfare of individuals." The institute is named after the Fraser River. Sir Anthony Fisher, previously instrumental in setting up the UK's Institute of Economic Affairs, was appointed acting director in 1975, until Walker became executive director in 1977. In its first full year of operation, 1975, the institute reported revenues of $421,389. In 1988, revenues exceed $1 million, and in 2003, $6 million. Topic. Political stance The Fraser Institute describes itself as an independent international research and educational organization, and envisions a free and prosperous world where individuals benefit from greater choice, competitive markets, and personal responsibility. Forbes has referred to the think tank as libertarian. The New York Times has described the Institute as libertarian and conservative. The Calgary Herald called it conservative, Langley Times classified it as right of center libertarian. Topic: <inaudible> Funding. <inaudible> as a registered charity with the Canada Revenue Agency, the institute files annual registered charity information returns. In 2010, the institute reported having $4.5 million CAD in assets and $10.8 million in annual revenue. The institute depends on contributions from individuals, corporations, and foundations. It does not accept government grants or payments for research, however, individual donors may claim tax credits for donations and corporate donors may claim tax deductions. The institute has received donations of hundreds of thousands of dollars from foundations controlled by Charles and David Koch, with total donations estimated to be approximately $765,000 from 2006 to 2016. It also received $120,000 from ExxonMobil in the 2003 to 2004 fiscal period. In 2016, it received a $5 million donation from Peter Monk, a Canadian businessman. In 2012, the Vancouver Observer reported that the Fraser Institute had received over $4.3 million in the last decade from eight major American foundations, including the most powerful players in oil and pharmaceuticals. According to the article, the Fraser Institute received $1.7 million from sources outside Canada in one year alone, according to the group's 2010 Canada Revenue Agency CRA return. Fraser Institute President Niels Veldhaus told the Vancouver Observer that the Fraser Institute does accept foreign funding, but he declined to comment on any specific donors or details about the donations. Topic: Research and publications. The Institute self-publishes a variety of reports Economic Freedom Index – The Institute's annual Economic Freedom of the World Index ranks the countries of the world according to their degrees of economic freedom. The Institute has also published regional and sub-national reports ranking the economic freedom of North America, Latin America, the Arab world, and the Francophonie. These reports are distributed worldwide through the Economic Freedom Network, a global network of 80 think tanks. Human Freedom Index, along with the Cato Institute and the Liberales Institute at the Friedrich Naumann Foundation for Freedom, the Fraser Institute publishes annual Human Freedom Index, which presents the state of human freedom in the world based on a broad measure of 76 distinct indicators that encompasses personal, civil, and economic freedom. 
The index presents a broad measure of human freedom, understood as the absence of coercive constraint. The index covers the following areas, rule of law, security and safety, movement, religion, association, assembly, and civil society, expression, relationships, size of government, legal system and property rights, access to sound money, freedom to trade internationally, and regulation of credit, labor, and business. The Human Freedom Index was created in 2015, covering 152 countries for years 2008, 2010, 2011 and 2012. In January 2016 data for 2013 was added, covering 157 countries. Waiting Your Turn – Wait Times for Health Care in Canada is the Institute's annual report on hospital waiting times in Canada, based on a nationwide survey of physicians and health care practitioners. The 20th Annual Survey, released December 2010, found that the total waiting time between referral from a general practitioner and delivery of elective treatment by a specialist, averaged across 12 specialties and 10 provinces surveyed, had risen from 16.1 weeks in 2009 to 18.2 weeks in 2010. Survey of Mining Companies, published annually, the Global Survey of Mining Companies ranks the investment climates of mining jurisdictions around the world, based on the opinions of mining industry executives and managers. Global Petroleum Survey, an annual survey of petroleum executives regarding barriers to investment in oil and gas producing regions around the world. Canadian Provincial Investment Climate, a series of reports measuring the extent to which Canadian provinces embrace public policies that contribute to, and sustain, positive investment climates. Firearms Reports. The Fraser Institute issued a number of articles and statements opposing Canadian gun control laws, including firearms registry. School report cards. Every year, the Institute publishes a series of school report cards ranking the academic performance of schools in British Columbia, Alberta, Ontario, Quebec, and Washington State based on the publicly available results of standardized testing mandated and administered by the provinces. The website www.compareschoolrankings.org allows anyone to compare up to five schools at once, based on a variety of performance indicators. Tax Freedom Day – The Institute's annual Tax Freedom Day report calculates the day the average Canadian family has paid off the total tax bill and royalties imposed on them and corporations by all levels of government. In 2016, Tax Freedom Day was June 7 with $45,167 of income having been collected per family. The Institute also offers a personal Tax Freedom Day calculator. The Institute publishes three magazines, Fraser Forum, a bi-monthly review of public policy in Canada, Perspectives, a French-language review of public policy in Quebec and La Francophonie, and Canadian Student Review, a look at current affairs written for students, by students. In March 2010, the Institute released Did Government Stimulus Fuel Economic Growth in Canada? An analysis of Statistics Canada data, a report critical of the Harper government's economic action plan, concluding that the stimulus package did not have a material impact on Canada's economic turnaround in the latter half of 2009. <laughs> <laughs> Education programs The Institute periodically hosts free seminars across Canada for students, teachers, and journalists, focusing on key economic concepts and timely issues in public policy. In 2010, the Institute hosted eight one day student seminars, attracting more than 775 participants. The Fraser Institute also offers an internship program, to which more than 431 individuals applied in 2010. Other initiatives Topic. Children First Canada's first privately funded program of its kind, Children First, School Choice Trust, offers tuition assistance grants to help parents in financial need send their children to an independent school of their choice. The program was discontinued in 2012. Topic. Donor Awards Canada's largest non-profit recognition program, the Donna Canadian Foundation Awards for Excellence in the Delivery of Social Services recognize non-profit social service agencies that, despite budget limitations, excel in terms of management and service delivery. Winners are selected every year in a variety of categories, and share in $60,000 prize money. Topic. School Chain Showcase A global database of school chains, the multilingual website allows anyone to connect with school chain operators around the world. Topic. 
Topic: <laughs> Governance. In April 2012, economist Niels Veldhaus was appointed president. The institute is governed by a board of trustees. Current members of the board include Peter Brown, chairman, Mark Mitchell, vice chairman, and Edward Beltsberg, vice chairman. Topic associated people The Institute has attracted some well-known individuals to its ranks, including founding member Friedrich Hayek and politicians such as former Reform Party of Canada leader Preston Manning, former Progressive Conservative Ontario Premier Mike Harris, former Progressive Conservative Alberta Premier Ralph Klein, and former Liberal Newfoundland and Labrador Premier Brian Tobin. From 1979 to 1991, the Institute's senior economist was Walter Block. Former Alberta Wildrose Party leader, now talk show host Danielle Smith. Topic. Controversies According to an article published in CBC News Online, some people allege that Michael Walker helped set up the institute after he received financial backing from forestry giant Macmillan Bloedel, largely to counter British Columbia's NDP government, then led by Premier Dave Barrett. In late 1997, the institute set up a research program emulating the UK's Social Affairs Unit, called the Social Affairs Centre. Its founding director was Patrick Basham. The program's funding came from Rothmans International and Philip Morris. When Rothmans was bought by British American Tobacco in 1999, its funding ended, and in 2000 the Institute wrote to BAT asking for $50,000 per year, to be split between the Social Affairs Centre and the Centre for Risk and Regulation. The letter highlighted the Institute's 1999 publication Passive Smoke, the EPA's betrayal of science and policy which highlighted the absence of any scientific evidence for linking cancer with secondhand smoke and received widespread media coverage both in Canada and the United States." At this time the CEO of BAT's Canadian subsidiary, Amasco, was also on the Fraser Institute's Board of Trustees. The Fraser Institute ceased disclosing its sources of corporate funding in the 1980s. In 1999, the Fraser Institute was criticized by health professionals and scientists for sponsoring two conferences on the tobacco industry entitled Junk Science, Junk Policy? Managing Risk and Regulation and Should Government Butt Out? The Pros and Cons of Tobacco Regulation. Critics charged the Institute was associating itself with the tobacco industry's many attempts to discredit authentic scientific work. In 2004, the Fraser Institute issued a statement of support for the legalization of cannabis and its sale on the market. <laughs> 